Hi friends. If you click to grab some inspiration for the looks using Paul McGrath's Subversive Mothership 3 featuring Natasha Denona Safari palettes, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, Thanks for coming again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick ahead over to my Instagram. You know it's almost wash day when she's in the top knot. This is a video part of my remastered Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette tutorial series where I go back into palettes that I might have done several looks with, I might have done reviews for, but wanted to dive back in to use it more because this happens to me and I'm sure a lot of you, we spend so much money on makeup, we use it once, and forget about it. And Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes are very expensive. And I think as beautiful as they are, a lot of us consider them, treat them as treasures. They should be used because it's makeup. And it goes bad, right? I mean, if you really just want the palettes, you could very much scoop out the eyeshadow when it goes bad. But I know I'm gonna use mine for as long as I can. And with that, if you have several of these luxury eyeshadow palettes, why not put them together? See what looks we can create. So this video is mainly diving back into subversive. I actually have a subversive review video. I have a video doing three looks with this palette, but I wanted to dive back in and combine it with Safari because I feel a lot of the shades in here in both the eyeshadow palettes can work so beautifully well together and I just I just wanted to see what would happen and share that with you friends so with that said all my complexion products that I have on my face will be down below I'm actually trying out the Mented Cosmetics or Skin by Mented Foundation Stick in L20 I tried L10 in the Midnight Sun video and I actually have the Zoeva Authentic Skin Perfector Retouch Concealer is a little too light. However, I have 134 Real. I think 140 might be a better shade, but I waited so long for these concealers to be delivered. I figured I'll just finagle the shade. It's fine. And with that said, friends, why don't you come in a little closer? On the lids, we will use our MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. Now here is Subversive. This was my first Mothership palette and it has a very special place in my heart. I actually think it's one of her most comprehensive color curations because you could go wham bam or you could go chill. And I wanted to combine some of the shades found in Safari from Denona. So let's start with, ooh, I'm excited. What should we do? What should we do? Going in with Night Creature, one of the best shades ever. I'm placing that right on the center of my lid with my finger, patting it down first. A lot of these textures from Pat I feel are best applied with the finger. You can see you get the most color payoff and the shine is just unbelievable. If you wanted to exclusively use Subversive, you could very much go in with Night Creature all over the lid and buff the edges with Deep Shade. But what we're gonna do, I wanna first go in with Lotus from Safari. I'm gonna buff that into the crease with my Wayne number 16. And you guessed it, predominantly pink look, very much inspired by the Night Creature shade. I think Lotus is a great shade to start off this matte blend with and of course as I do with a lot of my mattes or whatever shadow texture I'm working with I like to pull it out oh I got a little oh what's that got a little bit of dry skin there don't know what that could be due to maybe from all the looks I've been doing I don't know now with Maasai with my Sonagy crease pro tapping that gently on the outer corners and with this palette specifically with Safari I find these mattes are best tapped on and not swooshed in you can swoosh when you've applied the majority of the product on like so right if you see that it's already on there you can now gently take your brush and smooth out the edges but the initial application you definitely want to tap taking our 16 from Wayne and further blurring going back in with night creature since I Buff some of that away, which is all good though. I'm bringing it over a little bit of Maasai as well. You were too far. Didn't like that. If you want a little bit more depth, you could go in with Voodoo, or we could go in with the deep shade from Subversive. I'll do Voodoo because I feel it has a purpley undertone that I think will 
pair very nicely with what we got got, bleh, got going on on the lids already. This is my Isum W36. And again, once you've tapped it on, you can sweep through. Don't mind this patch. This is a bad patch of skin that I don't, I actually don't know what's happening there. I'm so sorry. Taking more Lotus and blowing the shadow up closer to the brow. Very light pressure there. Now we could apply something totally different on the inner corner. This could be a nutty mood, but I have to go in with Blitz Amethyst. Hakuhodo J242, I press that first and then I tap very gently and I use the edge of the brush to just fit it right under this crevice here. It's a lot, right? I mean, you could very much go in with Night Creature just from lid to inner corner, but Blitz Amethyst has such a beautiful flip to it that when combined with Night Creature, it's just gorgeous. A balloon. And we're not even done, friends. We still have these VR and astral shades in here. Yahas, but I think that's a really beautiful combination. If you want, we could go in with VR Pink. I lightly tap and right on the center, right on the center of Night Creature, it just livens up that pink more. It makes it appear electric in nature, just so neon. The light's not even doing it justice. I mean, this is the glow. The glow's insane. One of my favorite shades from Subversive Lazarus. Using my Isum W21 with, is it the 21? Hold on. No, it's the 23. Pulling that gently across the lower lash line and just connecting it with what's happening at the top. I could very much go in with another matte from Safari so it could appear a little more cohesive, but I think that's a good combination. We could stick with that. Astral Ghost Orchid with my refer number three right on the inner part of the line. The lash line, I meant to say. And I'm just pushing this pigment gently with the side of the brush. And why not? I'll bring it up a little more onto Blitz Amethyst. Oh, I love. I'm just patting Voodoo on my dry skin patch with my refer two just so that it could look more covered it'll look fine from far away but you know i'm just i gotta fix that okay and taking my cosette s185 i don't use this brush a lot but this is a great little brush that i feel is optimal for detail work like this just the final sweep through right getting everything together all right i1 is done why don't we go for Eye number two. I want to go in with the olives and use Gigabyte as like the main stage shade. Ooh, that's gonna be so sickening. Damarind. Refer number 14. A much smaller brush than I would otherwise start with when applying the first matte shade. But you know what? I feel I need a little more control here. Now, I mentioned this in my first Pat McGrath B look video using Subversive. A lot of these textures that you saw from Sublime can be used on the lid, can be buffed out and blended much like a matte texture could, would. But because I'm combining palettes, I'm not featuring that capability, but you know that it's there. For instance, Lazarus can be moved and grooved and blended out in this way you could just have like an all bronze eye. But I wanna go in with tamarind first and set that color up. Just pull it out slightly and get it in here in the crease. Going in with Savannah, tapping that on with my Sona G soft shader. And these are one of the shades in Safari that I definitely feel tapping on first is best. And then the edges buff out easily and so much so you don't actually have to swirl and twirl them in. But I understand if that's frustrating to you if you are very much accustomed to that technique. If you want, with the smaller brush, this is my refer number, f I think it's 13, with the Savannah shade just on the very edges here because again you can be met with you know some of that and that's why i rather tap in savannah than fluff it in and i make sure i lift the brow so i see where i'm applying the shade and i go in with my smaller fluffy brush and just feather out the edges now with gigabyte on the inner part of the lid this could go very well with 
Wicked Envy from Midnight Sun. You could probably do this with Blitz Emerald from Sublime. Just carefully tapping that on and then tapping the edges here. So on the G, build a three with Gigabyte, but because I want a precise application here under my eye crease, I'm using the edge of the brush to just punch that in. Skin show fever. On the inner part of the eye, I'm taking Savannah with my Isum W23. I'm just bringing that along the lower lash line and punching that up near towards the lid. And why not? Let's take Night Creature here. I know it is an escape from the predominantly olive antique gold color store we have on the lid, but I think important for you to know you can incorporate these shades in several ways. Don't feel like you have to stick with the same shades you applied on your lid when you apply on your lash line. You could definitely mix it up. And going in with a little more tamarine with my Wayne Goss 16 and further feathering up the very top edges of Savannah. All right, let's apply these lashes and I'll be right back. And here's the finished look for both eyes. On the lashes, we have Ardell Naked Lashes in 424. You can see a little bit of, of course, Savannah. I feel I should have just put this on exclusively and not on top of uh, Tamarind, but you know, what are you gonna do? It could also be because my eyelids are dry or I should try another primer, but here we are. We got this side going on and wanted to put the spotlight on Gigabyte and Night Creature. And you can see how beautiful Blitz Amethyst looks with Night Creature and just the Astral Ghost shade here. And Lazarus has, even though it's not like Night Creature in terms of finish, it still has beautiful shine. And here's a wide shot of both looks. On the lips, I have the Mel Thompson and Christian Aldette collab lip liner in Smooches, topped with my Gucci satin finish lipstick in the Penny Beige. And here you can see how you can combine these shades exclusively from Subversive. I wanted to bring in Safari because I wanted to see Giga Pie in an olive tone setup as opposed to it just being paired with night creature like I've done in the past or just with deep shade or even extreme black because you can most certainly combine gigabyte with any of these shades especially with the blues I mean this is an easy pairing if you apply any of these exclusively on the lid and maybe gigabyte on the inner corner for your spotlight moment or even on the inner lower third and Lazarus all over the lid and then maybe gigabyte on the inner corner same thing with night creatures and that's why I wanted to bring in safari and not just safari you could combine Subversive with any palette in your collection. I think sometimes we get into a headspace, including myself, that we could only use Pat McGrath by itself. I'm sure Pat herself would love for her eyeshadows to be worn with other shadows from different brands. And why not? Like if you have a lot of Cleona, you could combine them with the Cleona or any other indie brand palette that you own. So that's why I'm happy to get into the next two looks because yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, that said, I'll see you guys in a bit. Black metal. I'm gonna go in first with my finger. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna push and gently pull. And I'm patting down to get the majority of black metal on the lid first, keeping it uh, significantly low because I wanna blur in some Lazarus. Blur in, blend in. Strange choice of words there, sister. Wayne Goss number five. With Lazarus now, the outer V, pulling it through the crease. Like I mentioned with the first two looks, the Lazarus texture specifically is very smooth, has beautiful glide, and very much well can serve as a crease shade, right? Not necessarily all crease shades have to be a matte texture, matte finish, because it moves so beautifully, and I think it just gives nice smoke from the get-go. And more black metal here, and being more confident in now placing that shade higher in towards the crease where Lazarus is. I'm being very generous with that application. Deep shade with my Isum W23, just lightly tapping here on the lower edge of the V. So not necessarily taking it all the way up towards the crease line, but just to add in a little more depth. And this is my Isum G34 and whipping more Lazarus up closer to the brow as I want this to look more diffused, have a little more color there as well. Gigabyte, Isum W20, 
three. 21, I'm so sorry, I keep mixing these two brushes up. <laughs> and as I spoke about on the first two looks, how you could use Gigabyte as an inner corner moment, right? That is not necessarily like a beige, champagne-y, even light pink type of shade, but it serves as a lovely highlight color here on the inner corner. I'm taking a little more black metal on the edges here with the same brush. And why not pulling Night Creature across the whole lash line on this side. Tapping extreme black right here on the outer edges. I have to be careful because I make sure that that doesn't get out of hand. And I don't want to pull it out too far. This is what happened to me in my Star Wars video when I was adding shadow here on the bottom but i swooped it out too far i'm gonna pull it in pull it in to get some control a little more night creature maybe so that it could appear not as splotch i should have left it alone i'm gonna change it we're gonna we fix that because i wanted to now oh and i should have cleaned that brush oh to just pull night creature here under the lash line exclusively vr pink inner lower lash line being fairly generous with it pulling it over night creature slightly and even over gigapite here some I think that pink and antique gold combination is really pretty now i think i want to go in with the most simplest eye look i could do because we only have extreme black and deep shade in subversive i want to go in with aya first we've been that in the crease with my wayne 16 deep shade from subversive hakuhodo b146 and this is a very uh it has a lot of punch this shade that's why i like to go in with it in small doses pulling it up here then i'll start to whip it in did I? I went into Lazarus by accident. Are you kidding me? Oh God. I was like, why is this doing a strange texture change right before my eyes? You tapped into the wrong eyeshadow, Alicia. Good job. Pulling it up a little bit because then I'll go back in with Aya, that beige matte, to just slowly start to buff out the edges of deep i'm all about the tap nowadays just tap it on before you start blending in for me it helps sometimes to just gain control over shadow that's very pigmented and has a lot of punch on the first go and using very light pressure and relying very much on the tip of the brush to make this smoky wing happen skin show fever now on the majority of the inner part of the lid the most basic thing you can go with if you don't have safari just use the bronzer shade if you do have one to buff out deep shade just to kind of give it a little bit of a lighter transition deep shade on the lower lash line and i need to line you up combining it to what's happening here blitz amethyst refer number three again but to show how if you want to still use the browns predominantly on the lid you can still use the colors in here for lower lash line pop however you want to do it i think this is a great way to bring in some color to a neutral look on the lid just bringing in my B146 again to just smooth these edges out. Astral Ghost Orchid. Popping that right on the inner corner. Now this is a very, I mean, you could very much go with Skin Show Fever on the inner corner predominantly, but if you wanted to bring in another color, you could certainly use the lighter pink. Just tapping a little more here. Dusting away some fallout. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here's the finished look. I have the same Ardell style lashes, naked lashes in 424 right hold on let me check yes and here is how the neutral side looks with a little bit of the blue and a little bit of pink and here is like the the crazy side where we combine the blues the neutrals the anti-gold and the pink and skin show fever doesn't have as much sparkle as blitz amethyst but it's still a beautiful shade and definitely more appropriate if you're into that finish versus the one here on the lash line and of course black metal with gigabyte is such a lovely combination and the shine from night creature under the lash line i mean it is just oh so gorgeous i have the same lip combination from the last two looks except i just slapped on mentic cosmetic semi matte 
finish lipstick in brand nude. I wanted something a little more deeper brown for these two looks and I'm really happy with how the neutral eye came out. I don't think I ever did something this simple using subversive before but if you take out the blue lash line this is a great daily friendly natural eye you can pull from subversive you don't even have to go as smoky as i did you could just use the deep shade to create a smoky upper lash wing or maybe you just take it to the edge here and then skin show fever as a lip color is great but why not since you have these colors available to you pop the fun color on the lower uh, inner lash line. I think it's a great addition. And this, forget it. I mean, we slapped on all the shades. Black metal, I forget how black metal, how beautiful that shade is. If you wanted to go really smoky with black metal, slap it on the lid like we did, finger or brush application, and then use extreme black, that will smoke it up real fast. And it just has that beautiful dark blue effect oh my goodness me so there you have it friends another pat mcgrath tutorial to add to our portfolio except i brought in safari and i can always do a video exclusively using safari as many of you have requested for me to do so the natasha denona tutorials are coming to just tackling this one palette at a time but typically i love combining a lot of the palettes that i have why not right if you have them and i think that encourages inspiration from your own collection and the possibilities are endless, right? I think it's fun to see what this brand has to offer and that brand has to offer, take their best and create something beautiful. So hopefully everyone is staying safe, is feeling good. I know this can't do much, but if there's any type of positive vibe, delight that I could provide you at this time, and if it has to be through eyeshadow then, here you go. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another Pop McGrath tutorial video. Get ready with me for Friday Night Chit Chat. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.